I'd like to go to uh, Psalms chapter 93, or I'm sorry, 95 verse 3. And I want to read a scripture to you. And I said, Lord, what do we need to share at Mount Zion this morning? And the Lord just gave me one little question that I'm going to get to in just a moment. But in Psalms 95 and verse 3, it says this, For the Lord is great God and a great king above all gods. I want to read it one more time. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods gods father we thank you this morning for this opportunity to be in your house with such great people we thank you for your presence we thank you for this awesome worship we thank you for the leadership in this house we thank you that mount zion has not yet begun to see the great things that god is about to do through this ministry and father we just ask you continue to bless the leadership continue to bless the people who serve within this house and Father, we just ask that you would bless these few moments we have together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to look at somebody right next to you and ask them this one question. This is the only reason I came here this morning is ask this one question. Are you ready? Find somebody next to you and ask them, how big is your God? How big is your God? I, my wife and I, we like to uh, go down to Amish country. And uh, we like to go down there and, and sample the cheeses and, and uh, go to the shops and, and have some fun down there. And, and one day, an Amish man was given f buggy rides. And so uh, we said, hey, we'll, we'll do that. That's a nice experience. So we get in the buggy, and we load everybody up, and uh, we're going around downtown in Amish country. And he's, he's excited, you know, and he's telling us all about his buggy. You know, he, look at these light switches I got. He's got blinkers on his buggy now. And and uh, he was just, I mean, he was, it was just the greatest thing in the world. He was so excited about his buggy. And then all of a sudden, he pointed at this other buggy right over there, and he said, you see those, Amish? They're different than us. They don't have a sticker on the back of their buggy. Because they said, well, we didn't have to have a sticker on the back of our buggy 50 years ago. Why do we do it now? We're not going to do it now. And he said, I told them, this ain't 50 years ago. Now, remember, I'm sitting in his buggy. This ain't 50 years ago. They need to get a sticker on the back of their buggy. And, and of course, we just enjoyed our time with them, but I began to reflect on that. And I began to think about how he was putting down them, and here we were sitting in his buggy. And so an Amish man cutting down the older order of Amish, thinking he's better than them because they don't have a sticker on their buggy or working lights while he's sitting in his own buggy. Somehow, over the generations of time, the church has structured itself in a way that has caused us to be divided. Divided that we become less powerful as a body and we drive our buggies around thinking we are better than the other person because we had a brighter sticker and flashing lights. And losing sight and never seeing how big our God really is. When we get caught up in the fog of how we have always done things, that we never see the greater things that God has before us. Because I wanted to tell him, you ought to see my buggy. <laughs> Amen. The one question this morning is, is how big is your God? And I, I'm reminded of, you know, things that seem to be so difficult to us sometimes that when we face obstacles that seem to come against us, I'm thinking of how big the universe is and how big our God is and how amazing that he is and how when iPads don't want to work any longer when you're trying to preach, how good God still is. Amen? And we're going to probably need Isaiah to come up here and fix this thing, but there we go. It is estimated that for every grain of sand on every beach on earth, there are 10,000 stars in the universe. Isn't that amazing? Scientists say, I did a little Googling, I hope that's okay and spiritual still for everybody, but scientists say that the sun is 93 million light years away from the earth, but the warmth of the sun only takes about eight minutes to reach your body. 
The sun is the most massive object in the solar system. The earth spins at around 1,000 miles per hour and hurtles through space on its orbit around the sun at about 67,000 miles per hour. It would take 1.3 million earths to fill up the sun. I want to give you just a short example this morning, and I'm going to ask Caleb to bring it up for me. If, if the sun in the universe, in, out, up in space, come on up here somewhere everybody can see you, was a beach ball, hold it over there for me. And let's say Jupiter was a golf ball, gives you a little bit of perspective. The earth would be about the size of a pea, or replacement this morning, a little pebble. So if you could take a little bit of comparison today to understand the vastness of the God that we serve, how big God really is in comparison to where we really are in our universe. Thank you, Caleb. Good job. Give him a hand. I'm trying to encourage him there. Amen. And when I begin to think about how awesome God really is and how really comparatively to the sun and Jupiter and the solar system and how massive everything happens in orbit. And then right here on this earth, right, I see Mount Zion somewhere down, some, somewhere there's somebody on nine o'clock service sitting in right down here somewhere. The vastness of how big God is, but he knows right where you are how big is your God I can't help but to think one time when I was a young boy my mother and and her sisters and some of the family were going to go on a bike ride and so they they took off and I said no I'll stay here at grandma's house well they got looked like they were having fun they got going down the street and I thought no I'm going to go with them so I jump on my little bike and I'm trying to catch up with them and I get up to the intersection and I start to cross the intersection, but a car coming the other way decided not to stop. And about that time, my mama looked me over her shoulder from her bike and she saw me and the car speeding across the intersection and the car hits me at the same time. My mother shouts that name. You know that name? She said, Jesus. That car hits me and I go flying through the air. I hit the ground and and they come running to me and are you okay are you okay I said mama it's the strangest thing it said I've, I kind of felt like this coming down on the ground and I'm not hurt I don't have a scratch I don't understand what happened but somewhere in the cosmos a great big God looking down into this earth he saw me and at the very mention of the name of his son Jesus he came to the rescue I could go on with story after story after story with how big our God is in his redeeming power. In Psalms 147 and 5, it says this, Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. How big is your God? He's big enough to rule this mighty universe, yet he's small enough to live within our hearts. Psalms 8 and 3 through 4 says this, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. What is man that you are mindful of him? When I look into the heavens and I see all that you've done and I can see the massiveness of your creation and the complexity of all that you created and designed, but you care for us. You know where we are. We serve a great big God. I did a little more Google research, Pastor Larry, and, and seen what the scientists were saying about our body, and this is really, really, really amazing. It says this. Listen to this. One cell from your mom found one cell from your dad. That's all I'm going to say about that each carrying 23 chromosomes, they matched up to form your own unique DNA. Then that one cell would set out to build that model of you in your mother's womb. They say this, if uncoiled, the DNA in all the cells in your body would stretch 10 billion miles. 
That's from here to Pluto and back. That's a good long ways, y'all. Scientists also say this. Listen to this. In a lifetime, your brain's long-term memory can hold as many as one quadrillion, which is one million billion separate bits of information. Your nose can remember 50,000 different scents. There's a few I'd like to forget. There are 100,000 miles of blood vessels in the adult human body. Think about that. The human eye can distinguish between about 10 million different colors. In the human, uh, in the human eye, if it was a digital camera, it would have 576 megapixels. In Psalms 139 and 14, it says this. I, I can only imagine why the writer wrote this, but he says this. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. Because, see, when you begin to compare how big your God really is and how amazing he really is, you begin to see how great and awesome and massive God really is. One time in our studio, uh, I think last year, a young man by the name of Nick Vujacic. He was born with no arms and no legs. He had lost all hope. He wanted to die. He didn't really know why. He had a purpose. He, he didn't see that how God could ever use him. But you know what? Someone introduced him to Jesus. And he found how big God really is. He began to discover that, man, I have purpose. I know I have no arms. I know I have no legs. But I have a voice. And through that, I found out how big God is, even in my inabilities. He said, Judge, I don't know why I was born this way, but if one person will find eternal life in Christ Jesus, then it's worth it all. He said, See, Nick discovered that God was bigger than his inabilities. How big is your God? I want you to get this next phrase here this morning, this, this one statement. It says this, We must recalibrate our perspectives by reminding ourselves that the God we serve is bigger than the mountain of difficulty that we're facing right now. Because I felt like it was important this morning to remind us that God is greater than the difficulties that we came in here with today. That God's power is greater than any stronghold or struggle that we're facing with. See, I don't know how big God is to you, but for me, he's bigger than sickness and disease. He's bigger than financial problems. He's bigger than broken relationships. He's bigger than divorce. He's bigger than politics. He's bigger than hopelessness. He's bigger than racism and violence and terrorism. He's bigger than fear and worry. He's bigger than the plans that I've ever made. I don't know what you're standing in front of you today, but I came to tell you that God is bigger and he's greater and he knows right where you are today and he's got the answer. You say, preacher, who is this great big God that you serve? Well, I'm glad you asked this morning. Because what I found out he is to me and what the scripture says, it says this. He is wonderful counselor. I'm trying to get some help over. He is wonderful counselor. Who is he to you? Look at somebody next to you and say, who is he to you? He is wonderful counselor. He is mighty God. He is everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. He's the lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. He's a hope for the hopeless. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the creator of the universe. He is the savior of my soul. If he is your savior today, why don't you stand up and give him some praise in this Mount Zion house this morning. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How big is your God? How big is your God? How big is your God? Hallelujah. See, I had to find out how big he was for me. Not for my daddy. Not for my mama. Not for my grandmama. I had to find out how big he was for me. Because when I faced some things, when I went through some difficulties, when it didn't feel like I was going to make it through, I found out how big God really is. See, you've been through some things you thought you would never get through. You didn't think you would ever make it, but you've been through 10 things since then. How come? Because you serve a great big God. You serve the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace. You serve the lily of the valley. You serve the soon and coming king. When he came the first time, he came as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
When he came the first time, they beat him and whipped him and nailed him to a cross. They spit on him and, and put him in a tomb. But I want to tell you, he's coming back again. And he's not coming back to be beat on, to be spit on, to be nailed to a cross. Oh, but friend, he's coming back as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I came to tell Mount Zion this morning that he's bigger than Muhammad. He's bigger than any God that we try to serve. He's bigger than Buddha. He's bigger than any Confucian. He's bigger than any Scientology. He is a great, 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 big God. Somebody with sickness in your body this morning. I came to tell you he's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than diabetes. He's bigger than back problems. He's bigger than financial problems. Come on, come on, receive it in the house this morning. He's bigger than financial problems this morning. He's bigger than a lost loved one. He's bigger than that troubled teenager. He's bigger than whatever you're facing today. That's the only reason I stopped by Mount Zion today was to remind you, to help us, to recalibrate our perspective that God is bigger than the mountain you're facing right now. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he's greater? Aren't you glad that he's bigger? Aren't you glad that from the earth he knows right where you are? He can see you this morning. I need you to turn to three people and say, he's about to turn it around. He's about to turn it around. Come on. I know it's the early service, but wake somebody up and tell them he's about to turn it around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just stay with me. Just one second. One second. One second. I'm closing. I, I got to get out of here. But, but listen, a lifeguard was on duty at the beach, and he, he saw a man drowning out in the water. And so he dove out to save the man, but when he got close to the man, he found out that the man was fighting and screaming for help, but his cry for help was contradicting his actions because he was fighting the water and he was, he was wrestling. But fine. So the lifeguard stayed about three feet away from the man and watched him. Finally, the man began to tire down. He was a large man, a big man. He began to tire down, and he lost all of his strength, and he said, I, I can't do it no more. I can't fight this no more. I'm sinking. I, I, I'm not going to make it. No, I can't do it no more. And the lifeguard's just waiting. <laughs> the lifeguard's, thank you, sister. The lifeguard's just waiting. And finally, the man just says, I give up. And immediately when he said that, and he saw he didn't have, man, I can't hardly stand. He said he didn't have any strength left. The lifeguard immediately just grabbed him like that. And even though the man was a large man, it was possible because he was now resting in the arms of his Savior. How big is your God? He's big enough to save us from our sins through Jesus, no matter what we have done. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, the God who created the universes, the God who planted you on this earth, the God who through our human body is so complex, through everything that he designed, he sent his son Jesus to die for us, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. He didn't come to the world to condemn the world, but through him you might be saved. Oh, thank God I serve a big God. 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 I feel under the Holy Spirit this morning that there's somebody in here, you've been standing on the verge. You've been needing an answer. You need some direction. You're saying, God, what next? What next? There's somebody in here been praying that. God, what next? I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I'm standing. This, but God, what next? It seems like nothing is happening. But I want to encourage you today to begin to praise him, begin to thank him, because God knows right where you are. He sees right where you are, and he's about to turn some things around. I just feel that prophetically in my spirit this morning, that he's about to turn it around. If you got sickness in your body, just lift your hands right now and begin to receive your healing. I declare healing to your body in the authority of Jesus' name that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. We serve a great big God today, and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for it. So today we stop by to remind each of us that God is mighty enough to rule the mighty universe, yet small enough to live within our hearts. And friend, I want to tell you, he's bigger than the chaos in this world right now. He's bigger than the chaos in this world. And I am so thankful. I am so thankful. 
Father, we praise you this morning. Come on, lift your hands all over this house. Father, we thank you. Lord, we worship you in this place. Come on, come on, lift your voice. Father, we thank you. Just cry out to him this morning. Cry out to him this morning. Father, we love you. God, we need you right now in this place. Lord, we need you to do it again. We need you to do it again. Father, we need fresh oil. We need a fresh anointing. God, bring revival. Bring revival to our hearts. Bring revival to this nation. Bring revival to your people. God, we need you right now. God, I ask that you turn it around for my friends this morning. God, turn it around in their bodies. Turn it around in their families. Turn it around in that circumstance. God, I thank you you're making a way out of no way. That you're bringing rivers in the desert place. Lord, I thank you. I praise you and I give you glory. Come on, just receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, let it be done. Let it be done in the authority of Jesus' name. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're hearing this morning, know that we serve a great, big God. We serve a great, big God. We serve a great, big God. We serve a great, big God today. And if you don't know him, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to say, yes, I want Jesus. Yes, I want to serve this great big God. Yes, I need him more than anything. I need him more than the very breath that I breathe. God, I thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. I just need a little more praise. Just a little more. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for me. But begin to thank that great big God. Begin to thank that great big God for your son that's about to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Begin to thank God for your husband that's about to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give him praise. Thank you.